Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. Tonight is the woman tell all. My question is, is the woman tell all tonight and then the fantasy suite tomorrow night? Where's my Harry Potter one? Or is the woman to law and the fantasy suite going to be combined into a two-night event? Either way, not much sleeping going to happen on my end. We'll see if some sleeping some sleeping is happening on Clayton's end. Oh and then we'll God. get into our uh, women tell all preview. I'm going to share why Clayton feels like he was rattled. How, why they had to tell him to smile more. <laughs> you know, isn't that funny? Is this where we've come in 2022, where we got women yelling at men? Hey, maybe if you smiled more, you know. But hey, maybe if he does, it's uh, uh, hard to find things to smile about when you've got 20 angry, uh, disgruntled ladies, some might call them, uh, sort of ripping you to shreds. Uh, I'll play the trailer for that, and we'll get into everything. Do me a favor, follow me. Uh, make sure to subscribe on uh, YouTube here, like this video, and comment. And of course, don't forget, you can follow me on Instagram at dneals for all updates. I'm going to be doing a live stream before tonight's episode, after tonight's episode, before Tuesdays, after Tuesdays, and rinse and repeat for next week. We're going to have so much to talk about. I got the voicemail line open. We're going to be taking your calls. We're going to have a ton of fun as we hopefully see if Clayton found love. It is an unspoiled season, and this is always fun to be a part of. So let's see what Clayton has to say about tonight's episode, and then we'll go into the um, into the trailers. Hey, everybody. It's Monday night, and you know what that means. Women tell all. It's tonight. You do not want to miss it. All right. Well, I guess we don't. So we'll watch it. You know, you know, uh, uh, Bachelor's got some competition out there, I have to say. There's some competition happening in Bachelor, and um, I'm getting on board. Uh, the Dave Neal Show has Love is Blind content now. That's right. Not recaps, but more like day-to-day updates, what's going on in their socials. Are Deeps and Kyle a thing? So I've got a brand new episode I released 24 minutes ago, Love is Blind Season 2, uh, about fan favorites Kyle and Deep D. If you don't follow Love is Blind, hey, go watch it, and then you can come back to the channel. Otherwise, we'll catch you over there when you do uh, catch up with the times. It's a good show. It's a good show. It's a little different than uh, Bachelor, but um, a lot of people are liking it. Hey, shout out to Megan Farley, new subscriber. Appreciate you. All right, Bachelor Clayton Eckerd was rattled after women tell all. I tried my best, he said. We'll see if best is good enough. I do wear my emotions on my sleeve, especially with facial expressions. The 28-year-old reality star exclusively told Us Weekly at the recent Women Tell All taping. A few of the women come up afterward and to tell me, hey, smile, I think it's pretty apparent that I was a little rattled by this. It really hurts me. Clayton added that he's always been a people pleaser, which made it difficult to take on the role of The Bachelor. I've always tried to keep as many people happy as I interact with, and tonight showed me that I really frustrated a lot of these women, and I hope that they can forgive me ultimately. But I could only say what I felt was need- needed to be said. I hope they understand that I'm human and I tried my best. I don't like to hold on an- to anything. I'm willing to forgive everyone for their actions. I was shocked by Shanae, Clayton admits to us about watching the show. I think she showed me one thing and did another on camera. But you know what? I think everybody deserves some grace. And I certainly hope that if she feels apologetic for what she did, then I can forgive her and we'll have to see if that's the case. Clayton said, I should have asked more questions. I don't necessarily know what in particular I could have done specifically. I mean, our days, we were running around doing a million things. It's not like we had downtime, but I could have in those moments just asked another question or two, and that may have uncovered what I needed to uncover. Uh, and then he fi- and then he says, um, these women taught me so much about myself. They identified areas of weakness that I have that I need to be better as a man. I would have not experienced half of this. I wouldn't be who I am even right now, if it wasn't for these women and teaching me the things that they did. All right, so good for him. So good for Clayton for kind of understanding there's a lot of growth that comes from the adversity he faced. But also, he he's, he's a people pleaser. I get it. Look, Clayton, I'm one of you. I get it. You want everyone to feel happy. Here's the deal with the women tell all, right? They're not allowed to criticize the show. They're not allowed to criticize their edit or any of those things. So all they can do is criticize you. You tried the best with the information you had. You thought Shanae and Elizabeth were both complaining about their mental health problems. You know, and you didn't know anything that you didn't know because now you're watching it back, you know, and and I think what the contestants on the show need to do is realize that you're a human too and you were thrown into just an incredible circumstance. Yes, I am a Clayton Eckhart apologist. And I'm a, and I'm proud to admit it. All right, so he, let's play the two uh, the two trailers that we have. Here's the first one. Those tears weren't fake. I slept with both. 
There are things that I feel like I can't compromise. She just completely destroyed me. My heart's not in it anymore. My heart's out. The Bachelor two-night event, Monday and Tuesday on ABC. All right, so that's tonight. Uh, and then from my sources that have talked to me that were at the taping, they say that Shanae doesn't apologize. She doubles down. And if anyone likes her after this, that's on them. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Maybe maybe she does have a moment where she apologizes. Maybe she doesn't. Kind of reminds me of Shake from uh, Love is Blind, uh, which I'm going to have a video up after this coming out, talking about that if you follow Love is Blind. Again, not to overly promote it, but um, some parallels there. When everyone compared um, Shayna from Love is Blind to... Uh, wait, what's what's her name? I'm getting all their names confused. There's a Shayna and there's a and there's a Shanae, right? When, that's right, Shanae, right. Whew, boy, when they were compared, they're compared because their names are similar and they're blonde, but they actually aren't too... Aren't too you know, no one, no one is out villaining... Shanae, is that a term, villaining? No one is my point. Okay. Uh, Bachelor Rabbit Hole says, do y'all really think he would say his heart isn't in it anymore if Susie wasn't his F1? Bachelor at Windmill, sleeps with two women and then his heart is broken. Okay, Pilot Pete. Bitcherette said, ready for this hot mess express to begin? Bachelor Rabbit Hole, never want to see Shrimp Nay on my screen ever again. I think we can all agree with that. His heart was never in it to start with. The little boy in his pants did all the thinking on his journey. Clayton has some growing up to do. Are we seeing a double standard here? The question I often ask. Now, obviously, the Bachelor audience is primarily women. Are we treating Clayton any differently than we would treat, say, um, a, a Bachelorette who may hook up with multiple people and then also have their heart broken? I think you can... You know, and, and again, and it's and it's almost like we're in this journey where we know what the show used to be, which I think it used to be a little less criticism for sleeping with people on the fantasy dates. And I think that's spilling out into into our modern kind of call out culture where we're going to watch the show and criticize him for pursuing each opportunity. Now, again, if Clayton decides he wants to hook up with two or three of them in the fantasy suites, He's allowed to consensually if they're if they're on board. But of course, if he like say say he hooks up with two and then he tells Susie and he really wanted things to work out with Susie, well, you gotta have those conversations beforehand. Is it gonna be a conversation where Susie says, Wait, what? You hooked you slept with them? And she's like surprised. And he's like, Yeah, I did. She's like, Whoa, I can't I can't get over this. If that's what happens, then we have a completely uh different scenario here because she's allowed to feel her feelings too. Now when it comes to Luke P, we remember on Hannah Brown season, Luke P is like, I thought you said you weren't going to hook up with him. I can't, I can't marry you if you just hooked up with these guys. And then Hannah Brown says, well, I do what I want and you're not going to get in the way of it. And that's fine. She's allowed to. But was a double standard set there then where Hannah Brown was allowed and in, in praise to be sex positive, which I think you should be, that we're not setting with Clayton Eckhart. I'd love to know your thoughts. Again, nothing's ever perfect. And whenever we sort of say like, how is it this way with the bachelorette versus this way with the bachelor, it can become sort of like um, uh, murky water because, you know, I, I don't love to compare the shows because equality is not doing everything the same exact thing tit for tat. There's power structures that exist. There's other issues at play. There's other variables. Um, but if Luke P, and again, I'm here with this, it all comes back to Luke P. Uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be talking about Luke P's toes next episode. If you're wondering what's... Uh, okay, so when it, came to, when it comes to Luke P with Anna Brown, we'll never know. Because Luke P, you know, he got sued for $120,000 because he he wanted to get his message out there. And again, I found him insufferable in his own ways. But if he did have a... Con Maybe we do need the X-Files music. If Luke P did have a conversation with Hannah Brown where she told him, hey, I'm not going to sleep with these other guys beforehand, and then she reneged on that, then he would be like, hey, I thought we had a deal. I thought we were... We set boundaries and we were going to live within those boundaries. Now, if Clayton Eckhart talked to Susie and said, hey, I'm probably going to sleep with all my finalists. Is that something that would hold you back from future things? And she goes, no, perfectly fine. And then we find out she's not. Then we have a problem. How it appears with Susie and Clayton so far from the naked eye, as I see it, it and there is no such thing as a naked eye on this show because everything's highly edited, but I digress. How I see it is that he didn't set those boundaries or um, standards 
of protocol with Susie before the episode. Again, we'll see how it all plays out in the next two days. Live stream today before, oh, wrong one. Live stream today before and after tonight's episode. Same tomorrow and same next week. Listen, if you love the extra free content, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe. And if you really want to be generous, go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal for bonus membership only live streams. We'll be going live tomorrow on Patreon. So stick around for that. All right, bye everybody.